Well guys, after all these years, it's time to finally retire Cinebench R15 in favor of the new Cinebench R20. So that's right, there is finally a new Cinebench on the market and it's a very welcome thing, especially as CPUs reach higher and higher core counts and higher and higher clock speeds, we're seeing the older Cinebench R15 to be kind of eh, but never fear. The new one is here and it is pretty intense and it definitely showed me that the 1700, the Ryzen 7 1700 that I was running at 4 gigahertz was not quite as stable at 4 gigahertz as we thought. So if you're running a Ryzen chip and it's overclocked, let me know how your results go. Definitely let us know about that one. But what we're going to do here today is we're going to look at Cinebench R15 and we're going to look at the Core i9 and we're going to look at some core scaling and priority impacts. So one of the things in the past with the Cinebench R15 to get extra performance or to get a little few extra points you could change the priority and we're going to see if that impacts this version as much as it did the old one and we're going to take a look at the again the Core i9 and we're going to take a look at the Ryzen 7 1700. I know that now we're not doing a direct comparison except for in a clock speed comparison so I don't want you guys to get too hung up on what the scores were for the i9 and the scores for the Ryzen 7 because what we're looking at is cores from two cores two threads all the way up to eight cores and 16 threads and both systems are running with DDR4 3200 one has a Trident Z kit one has a Flare X kit you can probably figure out which one is which and they're on their respective 370 platform so Z370 and X370 to get these results so with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at the Core i9-9900K at 5 gigahertz. First off, with zero offset, so no AVX offset. This is straight 5 gigahertz, 100%. And we're going to take a look at those results right now. So you can see there at the bottom of the stack, at the two cores and two threads, you get a score of 962. And at the eight core 16 thread mark, you get 5,275. So quite a range there. One of the big key factors that I noticed when taking a look at this was the lack of an impact or the minimal impact that the threads themselves cause as opposed to actual core count. You can see there uh, two cores and four threads does not even come close in comparison to four cores and four threads. And the six core six thread is trouncing on the four core eight thread. So even with more threads, it is still coming out on top and the same thing, well, similar can be said over here with six cores, 12 threads and eight cores and eight threads. You see a 12 threaded chip is barely keeping up with an eight core part. And that actually is pretty interesting considering the i7 8700K and the i7 9700K being the six core 12 thread and the eight core straight, well, straight eight core CPU with no hyper threading. So with the core scaling out of the way, what about the AVX offset? See, that is one thing when a lot of people started overclocking chips a while back, they always would bump down that AVX offset to get a higher typical core clock. And then it would reduce the core clock under AVX loads. In this one, you're definitely going to want to leave that AVX bumped as high as you can because that's where you're going to lose a lot of performance in this one because this is an AVX workload. And those results show quite a despairing difference between running a no offset and then a negative 300 megahertz offset or a three offset. Those are in increments of 100. But you can see there, uh, even the single core hurt quite a bit going from 514 down to 486. Still high numbers, but it is worth mentioning that there is an impact from using that AVX offset because this is an AVX workload. Well, now, what about the priority settings? So before you could let Windows dictate the priority or you could set it to high or real time for a few extra points. And well, looking at these results, it seems kind of the same scenario again. Of course, the points are negligible. Now I did reboot the system in between, so these were initial runs because running it multiple times can degrade the performance or degrade the performance, rather, not degrade, whatever. Either way, uh, we see that there is a bit of an impact, but it's not enough to really be too concerned about unless you really want those few extra points for bragging rights or HW bot competitions. Moving things over to the Ryzen 7 1700 system running at 3.9 gigahertz because four just simply wasn't stable with this. It, we tried numerous times and tried different voltages, uh, LLC settings. I tried a good bit. Four gigahertz wasn't happening with the 1700. Uh, but you can see here that the, well, it's a very much the same story as from before with the i9 except with lower numbers, 
due to the clock speed primarily. And we'll take a look at that here in a bit. But we do see a similar scaling thing here where definitely benefit from the cores more than the threads. But it's good to see the scaling. I like these larger numbers because it gives you a bit wider of a gap between certain numbers instead of like the difference between 850 and 870. It goes, wow, we got a big difference. Well, a little bit, but with this, you can see a much wider, a more granular change, I suppose is one way to put it. Now, priority settings on the Ryzen chip, much like the i9, it made a little bit of a difference, but not enough to really justify the hassle. But again, if you're going for those few extra points, it may be worth looking into. Now, what about the big kicker here. So what about the Core i9-9900K and the Ryzen 7 1700? Because let's just be honest, the 1700 is the same as 1700X and 1800X and not a whole lot different from the 2000 series. They just have better core clocks. So this could have been more interesting if I had a 2700X that could stay over four gigahertz. Uh, but both, clock, both chips clocked to 3.9, so matching clocks. The results are pretty interesting. In fact, they're really, really close. You see a 200 megahertz or 200 megahertz, 200 point difference ish on the multi-core performance, but only 13 points difference on single core. So when both are clocked reasonably, well, at the exact same core clock with the same speed memory, you see that not a whole lot of difference in this one. It's really interesting to see and shows that Ryzen may not be as far behind as some people think but it does suffer from a core clock deficit. So definitely something to keep in mind. Definitely makes things interesting for Zen 2 that's upcoming in a few months. Those are the Ryzen 3000 series. So that could be a very interesting performance benchmark to look at. And I know everybody loves playing Cinebench. So we'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well as your results down in the comment section below. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure that you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next one.